In order to do this job properly, you must remove the ballast and rewire the fixture. Electricity is dangerous. If you don't have a reasonable understanding of electricity and good, prudent work habits, don't do it. You could get hurt. My fixtures were non-shunted and as such I had to create wiring that caused my tombstones to be shunted. Yours may differ. Yours may be shunted tombstones, in which case the wiring pattern might be slightly different. Your fixtures probably have ballasts, perhaps starter, and the wiring may look quite complicated. The good news is that your purpose is to make things very simple. What you want to accomplish is to have power on one end of your FA8 tombstone pair and neutral on the other end. The non-plunger end of your tombstone pair has two sides. Your purpose is to make sure that both these sides are connected to each other. I have a large boathouse with seven of these eight foot dual fluorescent fixtures. They use FA8 tombstones and have a rather substantial ballast. Replacement ballasts would be in the $35 to $40 range. And in the winter, when things are cold, fluorescents have a rough time starting up. The answer is obviously to replace these with LED fixtures. Here you see the fixture with the dual tubes removed and there are two somewhat less than four foot plates that cover up the internal wiring. As you can see there are screw type pins that will be removed in order to drop those plates. Now you can see the fixture with the cover plates removed. I'm going to take this entire fixture down and put it on the bench so that you can more easily see the steps to rewire and cut out the ballast. That there is a hole on one end of the fixture where the supply wiring comes through and is wire nutted to the existing fixture wiring. Now you can see the fixture sitting on my workbench. In order to do this, I removed the wire nuts from the power supply wire and pulled about three screws tombstones and as you notice there is a black and a white wire which was connected to the incoming power and then there are traveler wires coming from the other side of the tombstone that go on out to the ballast. This is the spring-loaded side of the FA8 tombstone pair. You push in on against a spring and a pin from the end of the fluorescent or LED tube inserts into the recess and makes electrical contact. Now I'm going to remove the ballast. Notice on the end there is a small nut which must be removed and then the ballast can be lifted out. This is a 9 millimeter deep well socket on a quarter inch ratchet and the extension that I'm using to pull the uh, nut that's holding this ballast to the fixture. This ballast happens to have a nylon wiring harness that inserts into one end. From that is your power and neutral leading to the 
opposite side from where the power supply came in and your traveler power and neutral. Some of your ballasts will have wires that lead directly into the ballast. In those cases, you will just clip them. If you have any thought of ever reusing the ballast or selling them for whatever reason, make sure you leave at least three inches so that it can be easily rewired. This shows that I have clipped the four wires that were leading to the ballast. The red and blue from the non-power end of the fixture and the black and white that proceeded from the tombstones on the power end of the fixture. My next task is to connect the black power lead that used to go to the ballast with the red lead from the opposite side. Also, the white lead that used to go to the tombstone will connect to the blue wire. This shows them connected. There are two different ways the non-plunger end of your tombstones can be wired. Shunted and non-shunted. I have non-shunted tombstones and this was initially a major stumbling block. When you properly rewire this fluorescent fixture, you are going from complicated to simple. Your purpose is to have power on one end and neutral on the other. However, if you have a non-shunted tombstone, it doesn't quite work out that way and what you need to do is to make both of those black wires and both of those neutral wires on this end connect to your input power and your input neutral. I cut the long black wire coming from one side of the tombstone and stripped the wires introducing a fourth wire and wire nutting all four of these together. Now both sides of the tombstone are connected. They lead off the feed power to the other tombstone which will be on the opposite side at the other end of the fixture and then there is a wire to be connected to the incoming power. Now repeat the process for the neutral wires. It's vitally important that you understand whether you have a shunted or a non-shunted tombstone. If your tombstone is non-shunted, you must connect each side to the other. You can check this out with a multi-tester. I took a length of power cord and stripped the ends, both power and neutral, so that I could test my wiring out on the bench top. Here is my fixture wiring connected to my test power cable. And the moment of truth, I insert my new LED tubes and plug it in on the bench with my patch power cord and away we go. It works. It works perfectly. Now a little editorial commentary. You will see that there are some tubes sold that will say that they can be installed directly into a fixture without removing the ballast. That would, in my opinion, be foolish. When I took these ballasts out after running fluorescent tubes, they were sometimes almost too hot to touch. There is a major amount of power going into producing heat within these ballasts, and when you don't remove the ballast, 
you are losing a lot of your electrical efficiency. These tubes that I just put in are rated at 36 watts and they produce as much or more than the 75 watt fluorescence that they replaced. Quite a bit of that is the energy that was used to produce the heat in the ballasts. When I read the reviews on the various single pin LED tube lights, I noticed that quite a few people would talk about how four or five or several of their tubes would not work. I think I know the reason why. Whenever I found a tube light that would not work, I was always able to make it work by creating a spacer that would go into the recess of the plunger end. For some reason, as the Chinese manufactured these tubes, they did not conform to the standard of what an FA8 fixture should be. I found a document indicating that it should be 0.32 inches for the pin that goes into that recess and none of these Chinese manufactured tubes will come anywhere close to 0.32 inches. The top fluorescent tube is an absolutely standard Sylvania F96 T12 fluorescent and all of mine were just like this. Notice how much bigger or deeper the pin is. Here is a document that I found outlining what an FA8 tube should look like. It shows that dimension B minus dimension A should be 0.32 inches. I have had two different batches of Chinese tubes sent the first one back before I understood what the problem was and in every case these pins are much shorter than the standards that I am attempting to replace. Obviously, if you have a pin that doesn't quite make contact with the electrical area at the bottom of the plunger recess, you're not going to get light. There are two potential fixes for this short pen problem. The first would be to replace all of your plunger tombstones with newer ones that have a shorter recess. Some tube suppliers anticipate this problem and actually include replacement tombstones in their kits. However, the difficulty is that if you have old rusty fixtures, replacing these tombstones can be problematic. I will probably replace my tombstones eventually, but I did come up with a workaround that seems to be quite effective. I took 12 gauge copper wire and made two coils around a nail that is properly sized so that the resulting coil will be the correct diameter. When this is pushed into the plunger receptacle it makes a shorter recess and all of my lights that were problematic now function correctly getting electricity. In order to do this job properly you must remove the ballast and rewire the fixture. Electricity is dangerous. If you don't have a reasonable understanding of electricity and good prudent work habits, don't do it. You could get hurt.